I'm really excited to tell you about our first ever public stock offering. This is going to allow us to live the ideals of being community owned and also fund the expansion that we need to do to meet our demand. We're going to open up a third location with production capacity in San Luis Obispo. We've already gotten some success on a stock offering. We purchased additional production equipment and a delivery vehicle with a freezer unit. So we're really excited about how it's progressing. Now I want to share with you some of the details about that stock offering. Prior to the offering, we had 6,000 shares outstanding. And in this offering, we're looking to do 8,000 shares at $50 a share or raise up to $400,000, which is going to fund all the growth that we're looking to do. Now, there's a couple of reasons we want to do a public stock offering. One, during 2009, as we had to get some bank loans changed for an expansion, it took about a year to get through the process. Now, understandably, it was a tough time to get bank loans, but it was a very difficult process. Also, as a company that follows biblical principles, there are some references that you don't want to be a borrower. So we'd like to do our expansion into the future using capital purchases as opposed to using bank loans. And one of the things that I think is really exciting is I am an innovator. I love creating. I love creating Doc Bernstein's and the image it is. So I would like to create a business model that has community ownership and allows companies to grow within their communities and be committed to giving back their, to their communities and doing it through public stock ownership. One of the things I'm really excited about is right now there is a trend towards buying local. And studies have shown that if you buy from a national chain, about one-third of what your purchase dollar goes to is going to stay in the local community. And about two-thirds goes off to corporate headquarters. If you buy from a local business, studies show that about two-thirds of your dollars stay in the local community. So what I'd like to create is a business model where up to 85% of your purchase would stay in the local community. And by 85%, I'm only discounting the 15% that goes in federal taxes on a corporation. And the reason you could get a higher percentage staying in your community is if you could buy and invest locally. So that's what we're creating with our business model, is a way of having community ownership. So businesses you know and love could also be businesses that you or neighbors are owners of. After hearing about our company, if you are interested in purchasing shares, you can arrange a time to meet us in person, or you can even fulfill the transaction here online by clicking on the Invest button down at the bottom. If you are looking to invest in our company, we want to let you know that we are a little old school in our approach. You're actually going to own stock certificates, unlike a lot of modern companies where you just get a statement from a broker once in a while. When you're buying company stock in a small company, you're actually buying directly from the company. So there won't be any brokers involved, no brokers commissions, no hedge fund managers or anything like that can get a piece of the action. You're investing in the company and the company communicates directly with you. Now for those who are interested in perhaps using retirement funds, we can do that as well. One of our board of directors is a retired financial planner and he's done this in the past where private placement offerings can be included in your IRA funds. So if you're interested in that, just call our office. In closing, I'd like to share with you the story of another small company that did something very similar back in the 1980s. Now these two gentlemen, Ben and Jerry, started an ice cream business and now we know it as this logo today, but back in the 1980s, they actually did a public stock offering as well. And they went around the state of Vermont selling shares. And they also instituted a giving back pledge of 7.5% of profits. Now soon after that, they went to the New York Stock Exchange with an IPO and grew exponentially. But they kept that commitment to giving back doing things like Peace Pops and Rainbow Crunch to try and help solidify that businesses can be about more than just profits. However, in 2000, Unilever and Dryers got into a bidding war. And the interesting thing was, Ben and Jerry knew that it would change the dynamics of the company. They knew the giving back pledge was going to be removed if somebody owned the company as a subsidiary, and they fought the sale. Institutional shareholders threatened class action lawsuit and actually forced Ben and Jerry off the board because they were not maximizing shareholder return by resisting the sale, and the company sold out to Unilever. They took out the 7.5% giving back pledge, just as Ben & Jerry's had predicted. And although they are a very socially conscious company today, it's not to the level that the founders had originally envisioned. So we put some things in place that we know will keep us from going down that same path. We have the beneficial corporation status, which protects our board of directors in a way Ben & Jerry never got protected. We also are planning to have the community ownership where nobody can take controlling interest and our bylaws do not allow corporations to own shares of stock. So with those two factors in place, as Doc Bernstein's grows to become a national brand synonymous with ice cream someday, we will always have the core foundation principles of giving back to the community and community ownership as part of our corporate model. So I'd like to share with you a photograph of our first shareholders meeting since we started the public stock offering. And I want to share with you my vision of a future shareholders meeting where people from throughout the community come together for a giant ice cream social to celebrate the wonderful brand of Doc Bernstein's Ice Cream Lab. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you at the next shareholders meeting.